Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Elena Rhodes. I am a biological scientist in the entomology and nematology department under Dr. Oscar Liburd. And I'm going to be talking to you today about two-spotted spider mites in Florida strawberries and some of our recent research findings. So two-spotted spider mites are a pest of many crops throughout the world, both agricultural and ornamental. The yellowish green form is the typical one you see in Florida. I've got a picture of the red form here and you can find orange ones and I've even seen a few bright green ones. So they vary in color and there's discussion among the people who study mites as to whether it's a species or a species complex. They puncture cells in leaves and suck out the contents. And so when you get lots of them on the leaves, you get the stippling damage. I've included a picture of the leaf with stippling damage on it. When you get very high populations, you start getting large amounts of webbing, which is where they get the term spider mites from. And leaves start dying. They can end up killing off whole plants. And you don't really want the population to get that high in your crop because you're in big trouble at that point. There are a number of different predatory mites that are commercially produced and used to manage the two-spotted spider mites. There are two commonly used in Florida strawberries. One is Neocellus californicus. They don't have common names, so I apologize for all the scientific names I'm going to throw at you. I promise it'll just be the two. They are a more generalist predator. They do prefer spider mites as food, but they can subsist on pollen and other mites and small insects in the field. So they can be released as a preventative treatment and start feeding on spider mites when they show up, when spider mite populations are still really low early in the season. And in the picture, you can see the big orange Californicus mite, her little milky white eggs, and then those shriveled things are spider mites that she ate to make those eggs. The other predatory mite that's used is Phytocellus persimilis. Tends to work better in uh, the Plant City area, the main growing area for strawberries because they don't do as well with the cooler temperatures that we get up here in North Central Florida. And they're a specialist. They're like a biological miticide. You release a bunch of them, they eat lots and lots of spider mites, and then they die out because they can't really survive on anything else. And they have similar eggs to N. californicus, but they have an orangish tint to them, a little bit bigger than the spherical spider mite eggs. We used mainly N. californicus in our studies. We looked at the effects of cover crops and cultivars, and then we also looked at a few management techniques. With cover crops, we, really, we didn't see any differences, which wasn't that surprising. The two main cover crops were sun hemp and hairy indigo, and then there was a four-way mix of those two, American joint vetch and slender leaf rattle box. And we had a weedy control, and there were no differences between any of those cover crop treatments with the two spotted spider mites and their eggs, which you can see in the graphs, and also with the N. californicus and their eggs. So the variety, the cultivar effects were much more interesting. And I've got graphs showing the mite populations in all three years. The first year we had Strawberry Festival, Florida Radiance, Sensation, and Winter Star. And the mite populations were very low. They didn't get up above more than five mites per leaf. We did a preventative relief, release of N. californicus at 25 predatory mites per square meter and didn't need to do any other ones. That first blue arrow in all three of the graphs is that release. When we switched out Florida Fe or Strawberry Festival for Florida Beauty, we got very different results. We had much, much higher mite populations and particularly high populations in Florida Beauty. That's that blue line in 2017, 2018, and 2018, 2019. And we got better control in 2018, 2019. That was because in 2017, 2018, that curative release of N. californicus, that second arrow, I couldn't take data for two weeks, so that was a guess, and it was too low. So it took them longer to get things under control, whereas in the 
final season, the populations remained low in the other three varieties, in this case, Brilliance had replaced Winter Star, until the plants had deteriorated so badly in beauty that the spider mites started moving into the other varieties. And that pinkish arrow at the end of the season was P. persimilis that we released to clean up the rest of the spider mite populations at that point. As far as the management techniques went, we looked at some OMRI approved, organic approved miticides and the sulfur in the gray and the eremite, which is a mix of horticultural oils, both knocked down the two spotted spider mite populations really well in the greenhouse. The Grandivo, which was a bacterial product, knocked down some of the population. It's not gonna work by itself, but it might be useful in a rotation type of strategy. And we also looked at different ways of releasing the N. californicus predatory mites, because releasing them into entire plots is very expensive. The main goal was comparing that to spot treatments, which is where you take the mites and release them where spider mites are high, and that was very comparable to the whole plot treatments in both years. We also had the preventative release in there. We just did the preventative release and didn't do any further releases, so that, of course, would be an option. And that worked really well the first year, and it didn't work in the second year because we had weather issues that caused that not to establish. In conclusion, we didn't see any effect of cover crops on the two-spotted spider mite or the N. californicus predatory mites. We had really high numbers of spider mites in Florida beauty, so that might not be a good cultivar for Florida, whereas the other cultivars, Festival, Radiance, Brilliant Sensation, and Winter Star, all look like good options from an arthropod management standpoint. As far as organic Miticides, uh, the sulfur was very effective, as was aramite, which is a mix of horticultural oils. And then the spot treatment releases of N. californicus and the preventative treatments are also options for managing spider mites and much less expensive than releasing the mites towards the whole plot. So, thank you.